Hello team, welcome back. And today we will discuss on anchors in EML. We will see what are the anchors and aliases and what is the use or application of anchors and aliases in EML. So till date we have discussed multiple times that EML is a markup language or EML is mostly used in the configuration language. Anchors basically solve a very necessary problem in EMLs. And what is that problem? Anchors allow user to reduce repeat syntax and extend existing data nodes. It means whenever you have a requirement where you need to repeat a particular block of syntax again and again using the anchor you can solve that problem. If you are using the anchor then you don't need to repeat the syntax again and again and you can extend the existing defined data nodes. We will see how we can do that. That is moreover similar to functions in any programming languages where you define a function for a particular task instead of defining that task multiple times in your source code. You can always place a anchor using the end sign on your entity. Right. Wherever you have a section which you want to repeat again and again in that section or in that entity you can put ampersand and define the name of your anchor. And once you want to use that particular anchor repeatedly in your YAML, it means you need to define the anchor first and after that you can use it. And wherever on your YAML file you want to use it, you can use that using the alias asterisk. You need to choose asterisk and define the same anchor name to call it from the previous definition. So that is the thing how you can reduce the duplicate syntax in your YAML file that also minimize the file size and that resolve a very serious problem which is a maintainability. If you are defining the similar kind of syntax again and again again and again in your YAML file and you want some change then you need to make that change every place wherever you have defined your syntax. But if you are using an anchor you just need to define at a single place and you can call it multiple times in your YAML file. In future, if you want to change anything, you can change it at a single place and that change will be reflected across your file. Let me show you what we are saying. So over here, we have a sample YAML. That is a YAML for some kind of pipeline job in Jenkins. You can see over here we have the definitions. This is a key. Then we have object steps and here we are defining few steps. That is the first step name build and test. A script we are going to execute maven package as a script and where we want to publish the artifact we want to publish the artifact at a target directory now whenever you are building the pipeline it may possible that you need to use this particular syntax multiple times see we are making the pipeline for the two branches develop branch and master branch and in both of the branches we are using the similar syntax see this syntax is used here and this syntax is used here. So that is a very basic example and the file size is not big. But if you have a very big file size and there's a lot of syntaxes which are in the repetition, then this is a serious problem that you need to repeat your syntax every time in your file. And in case of any change, you need to make the change at every place wherever you have used that syntax. Anchor basically solve that problem. And how anchor solve that problem? So although this is a valid YAML file and if you will execute it, it will execute. But if you want to enhance this file using the anchor, then this is the enhanced version of this YAML file and this is the similar YAML file at runtime. The function of this file and this file is very much similar, but we have enhanced or we have transformed this YAML file to this particular format. What are the changes we have done? So there is no change in the definition, no change in the step, but wherever we are defining the entity which is repeatable, this entity is repeatable. What we are doing using the ampersand, we are defining this anchor name. This could be anything. We are taking it build hyphen test. Rest of the things will be same. So we defined this block as a anchor in my YAML file. Now in the pipeline, we are in the pipeline. We have the branches develop and master. So we are in the branches. This is a develop and this is a master because my complete syntax was repeated in the develop and master. So what I'm doing it right now, I am just referring my anchor. See in the steps we are saying express 
build test which is anchor name asterisk build test so using the ampersand you can define your anchor and using the asterisk you can make the alias of that anchor and you can use it in other word we can say ampersand is used to define the anchor and asterisk is used to refer that anchor which you have defined you need to make sure that the definition of the anchor must be prior in your file before its use it means if you will remove this pipeline section and put it up and put it before your definition then your file will throw the error so please make sure before using the anchor you must need to define that first let's go to the visual studio code and i will show you the same file in the json or yaml format so here we are on the visual studio code and you can see this is my file this is the file which don't have any anchor so this is the syntax without the anchor i will copy this and go to the browser in the browser let's first open the yaml viewer so we are in the yaml viewer and we will paste my file so we have pasted our yaml over here now we will click on the yaml viewer see we have the two object definition and pipeline so we are getting the two object definition and pipeline in the definition we have the steps so open the definition we have the steps steps have a array which have a one element step so this is the array and in the zeroth element we have something this is step of the name script and artifact so you will get the three entity name script and artifact similarly in the pipeline you have the branches so we are getting the branches we have two branches develop and master so we are getting two over here develop and master if you will open the develop and master you will get the same similar syntax see zero zero steps three steps three name script artifact name script artifact script is this script is this artifact is this artifact is this right let's try the same on json to yaml so we will paste our yaml over here and this is the equivalent json correct definition steps pipeline branches develop master now let's go to the visual studio code again and this time instead of the complete yaml let's choose the anchor yaml i will copy this and first i will paste it here you will see once i will paste my anchor yaml over here there's no change in your json see i have pasted it and there is no change it's still the same it means this thing is working as well as you will change something over here same change will be reflected over here over here and over here let's see build and test project see the similar changes are happening over here if you will change the script build instead of the maven package let's type maven clean package see similar changes happening at a single at every place so we are defining the syntax at one place and we are using that syntax multiple times in your yaml similar thing is applicable on the yaml viewer as well copy this paste it here click on the yaml viewer again things got changed go to the pipeline we have the two branches develop master go to the develop same master same steps three steps three name script artifact name script artifact script is this artifact is this script is this artifact is this right so this is the way how anchors and aliases is used to reduce your file size to remove the duplicacy in your file size and to reduce the maintainability of your yaml file anchor is a very useful feature in yaml right which you will not get in the json whenever you are parsing your yaml file by some programming languages either python java ruby you may see the different behaviors of the anchors right so that is the thing which you need to take care whenever you are using the some programming languages to work with your yaml although anchor and alias is a very good feature in yaml which will help you to design the yaml files or design the configuration in a efficient way Thank you team. See you next time.